So what is the theme going to be? Because at the moment, at the moment, at the moment, Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Jack Silkstone and welcome back to yet another Project Exodus construction update. That's right, if you watched my previous construction update, you'll know that we're currently in a bit of a weird stage um, in the construction for the UK's tallest roller coaster, Project Exodus, because at the moment, not a whole lot is really happening on site. As you can hear, not a whole lot's going on and you might be able to sit in this shop, but there's not a whole lot of movement. There are still workers here, they're doing a few bits and pieces, but yeah, we're at a stage where not a lot can happen. However, we are just about coming to the end of that period and we're on the brink of some really exciting stuff happening. In fact, we're currently just waiting for some big machinery to be delivered to the park within the next week or so. But yeah, at the end of my last video, I said that I wanted to film a Q&A for you all, a Q&A directly about Project Exodus, because loads of you leave loads of comments and I don't know where have a time to go and reply to them so I thought I'd just make a video dedicated to all of your questions about Project Exodus and I'll do my absolute best to try and answer them. Now before I get into it I have to make it super clear that I don't actually work for Fort Park themselves. I work with Fort Park a lot and I'm obviously within the construction site right now so I'm super lucky to be here um, but yeah I don't actually work for the park so all of these answers I give to your questions are going to be coming directly from me. It's not like any official word from the park so Fingers crossed I won't, but I might get something wrong here and there. Um, so yeah, don't take anything I say as complete gospel. It's coming from me, Jack Silkstone, not from Fort Park. And uh, just to be fully transparent, I am gonna send this video to Fort Park to review before I upload it. Just so if I do answer anything super wrong, they can tell me to take it out. But yeah, I just wanna get that out in the open before we start this Q&A. Um, but yeah, the park is currently closed today. Um, so there's no one about. I literally drove into the car park not knowing it was a closed day and there was just no one about. I was like, what is going on? And yeah, as I said, there's not really a whole lot going on, which is why I'm filming this Q&A today. I'm going to take the camera around to different spots around the site, um, obviously keeping out of the way of anyone that are working. They're currently all just down that end. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to answer a few questions at different locations. But you guys have sent in some very juicy questions indeed. So let's get started. Oh, there's also an update in regards to the infilling of the lake. So I'll show you that um, at some point in this video. But yeah, let's get started with the questions. So I've just been looking through some of the comments on my last video for this Q&A and I can't believe just how many questions you guys have asked. I was going to just pop up on my Instagram a quick um, ask me any questions you have about Exodus now but I absolutely don't need to. You guys ask so many questions and I'm going to do my best to answer as many as possible. But yeah the first question I've got here is from Joe Candish who said are they working on Project Exodus 24-7 so they have a day shift and a night shift to make sure the work is done quickly as possible before the weather turns into winter. The answer to that is no, they're not working on it 24 seven. They're working on it six, sometimes even seven days a week. Um, and they do kind of standard construction site hours. So they'll get here pretty early from like 8 a.m. ish. Don't hold me to this. Um, through until like four or five at the moment at least. Um, but I'm sure as we go into summer and probably once the track starts arriving, they'll kind of work longer days because the sun's out for longer and they'll want to get that track up as soon as possible. So yeah, not 24 seven at the moment, um, but they're still here a hell of a lot. Next up, we've got some questions from the true me who put some really awesome questions. Um, first of all, who are the crew that are building um, Project Exodus? Do they work exclusively for Merlin or do they work on all rides across the country or world? Could you talk to anyone on camera? So the people that are currently working on site are a company called J&O. Um, they're doing like a lot of the groundwork and they obviously took down um, a all of Old Town. Yeah, they're a lovely company. Everyone that's working on site is so friendly. They'll always stop and chat with me, especially over in the site offices. Like they just have a laugh and um, chat about all sorts. Um, they do work on a load of Merlin projects. So name a Merlin ride and they probably had some kind of involvement in it. One of the guys working on this project I actually spoke to way back in like January time. He's called Roy. And he said that he was actually here when they were building the likes of Logger's Leap back in the day and he was the one that like 
drove his digger and like took down the lift hill and obviously Loggers Leap's old station. So yeah, they've been in the industry for a long time and they've been working with the theme parks for absolutely ages. In regards to can I get anyone on camera, I would absolutely love to, but to be honest, I'm just trying to stay out of their way as much as possible. And at the end of the day, they are here to do a job. They don't necessarily want to be interviewed on camera. So maybe one day um, when it is super quiet, but to be honest, I'm just trying to leave them to do their thing. They leave me to do my thing. They're fine with me going around filming them at work so I don't want to distract them anymore. Another question, what memorabilia if any have you kept from the demolition? I know you gave away the curly fries side in your podcast but what have you kept for yourself? Um, so yeah, I admittedly I was able to take away some cool stuff especially when they were um, taking down Old Town and it was stuff that was going to go in the skip. So myself and the park kept loads for themselves, like the signs and stuff. But I, I managed to keep some cool stuff. Um, but one piece of memorabilia that I really want to kind of create from this entire project, I want to get all of the construction workers to sign my hard hat at the end of this project. Um, so I want to get the people that have obviously been working up to this point. I want to get the people that actually put up the ride itself. I want to get John Burton, the ride's designer, to sign it. Um, and yeah, that'll be a really custom piece. And then I'll... I'll have to get myself another hard hat for future projects. But yeah, I think that's a really cool one. But yeah, I managed to get some cool stuff from the likes of Old Town. I won't say exactly what, hopefully I'll be able to show it to you guys one day. Um, but yeah, I managed to keep some cool stuff. Right, as I said, I'm gonna keep moving around to keep the uh, angles interesting. So I'm gonna head to my next location. So our next location is where Creek Freak Massacre and obviously the original Logger's Leap station used to stand. I'm literally stood right where you'd come out of your boat, out of the Logger station, and obviously the strobe room finale for Creek Freak Massacre. But yeah, our next question comes in from James Ferguson, who said, do you know when the track is coming? Now, that's a really interesting question, especially for this time period. It's quite topical at the moment, because obviously Nemesis's track up at Alton Towers is already going in. I cannot believe just how quick of a turnaround it was between the track arriving at the park and being put up, like it's already in place. And obviously here at Fort Park, we're not even close to that stage, guys. Track is not due to arrive for a good few months now. I'm predicting it's going to be around summertime, like when the weather is absolutely gorgeous and I'm in shorts. That is when I think we're going to start seeing track. And even as we go into kind of fright nights, I think that's when we'll start seeing the really exciting bits of construction, like the lift hill going up. So yeah, unfortunately it's still going to be a while because here on site they still have to do all of this lake infill, they have to get the foundations in, they have to drill for those foundations, they have to get the supports up. So yeah, it's still going to be a very long time before um, track actually starts going in. So yeah, unfortunately we've got a while to wait, but as I said, we are on the brink of the next stage of construction happening here on site. So hopefully the next video that I film will be very exciting and it shouldn't be too long before that's uploaded. The last question that I'm going to answer here, it's got very dark all of a sudden. The last question that I'm going to answer in this location is from Adam Philpot, who said, why did Fort Park choose Mac rides over the likes of BM, Intamin, RMC, Arrow, Vacoma, Gerstler, GCI? Um, what are Mac bringing to the table in the way of uh, new next level innovations? And yeah, it's a very good question. Why have Fort Park gone with Mac? Obviously, Mac is quite a world renowned roller coaster manufacturer. If you don't know, they've made rides like Icon here in the UK, up at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Um, and within Europe, they've made rides like Blue Fire, Helix, um, the Ride to Happiness, which is quite well known to be one of the best roller coasters in the world, if not Europe. Um, so, yeah, why have Fort Park gone with Mac? Well, obviously I can't answer this on behalf of Fort Park, but I can, I can make a pretty good prediction as to why they went with Mac. And that is the fact that Mac are a very, very high quality roller coaster manufacturer. Their rides are often very smooth. And yeah, you can tell that they really care about their rides. Mac is actually kind of like a family run business by the Mac family. They have a theme park called Europa Park over in Germany. I've been a few times, there's a vlog on the channel from that theme park. And just go into that theme park, you can tell that this family really care about quality. And yeah, that is something that you get with Mac. You know they're gonna deliver. I do agree. It is a bit of a weird one for Fort Park because obviously here at the park, we've got two B&M coasters, Nemesis and The Swarm. B&M is another very um, high quality company. You've got a Gerstler over here, just to my right. You've got Saw the Ride. You've got an Intamin um, in Colossus and Stealth as well. So yeah, this is the first kind of big 
Mac Coast, obviously flying fish is technically a Mac as well. And obviously Project Exodus is not at all just an off the shelf ride. It is one of the most unique and interesting roller coaster layouts. Like I've seen Americans and Europeans getting so excited about this ride. And you know that when people across the other side of the world are getting excited for a roller coaster layout that something must be going right. So yeah, I personally am very excited that Mac um, are gonna be building Project Exodus and I can't wait to start seeing the track arrive and the trains, but uh, I've seen a few questions about those. So we'll talk about those at our next location. So you might've seen loads of trucks driving about in today's video. And that is because they are currently delivering loads of dirt for the lake infill. And as you can see, they have actually gone across the lake now, um, which is obviously a huge part of this project and the lake infill itself, um, because this is now technically its own separate area. And there's actually a pump down the other end. They're slowly just taking this water out. But yeah, loads and loads of dirt is being delivered today. There's trucks just constantly going backwards and forwards. I can't believe just how small this bit of lake is now think back when I started these updates, this lake was absolutely massive and they've gradually just been making it smaller and smaller um, so that eventually they can start putting in all of the supports and stuff. At the end of the project, it will be opened up again and it will return to the massive size that it was when I started these updates. But yeah, for the construction, they obviously had to make it a little bit smaller. But yeah, let's get on to our next set of questions. So our next question is from Joe Gibbons who said, um, love the update, Shaq. My question would be, do you think Exodus will get a backwards facing final row seat? Uh, maybe if they don't install it for a few seasons in, thanks. Well, that is a very interesting topic because with Fort Park obviously using Mac as their manufacturer for Project Exodus, Mac are very open in changing their rides even once they open. For example, over at Europa Park, they actually constantly try new things on their mega coaster, Blue Fire. Like they'll take out a seat and basically build like a spinning seat just to use for like testing or like a backward seat. And as we know, up at Blackpool Pleasure Beach on Icon, they actually introduced a spinning seat on the back of the train. Um, and over in Australia on another ride, which is exactly what Project Exodus will be, they have a backwards row right at the back so you can experience the whole ride backwards and apparently it's insane. So yeah, because Project Exodus is a Mac, there's every possibility that the ride could have some kind of altered seating. Whether that be when the ride is built on opening day or if it happens a few seasons down the line or who knows, it could just never happen. But the possibility is there because it is a Mac ride. Building yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah just answering some questions that people have had about it all. I was just saying about how you were here from the very start though, I said earlier, how you were here when they like built Logger's yeah. Leap and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was Roy, the absolute legend. Now, the next question is one that's been asked by so many people, I can't even give credit to one person for asking this. It's a very popular one. It's what is the theme going to be? Because at the moment, Fort Park have been very, very secretive as to what the theme of the ride is going to be. And this question has gone hand in hand with, Jack, do you know the theme? Are you hiding it like you did with the Fright Night stuff a few years back? Um, as I said at the start of the video, I work very closely with Fort Park now. And that's the reason, I'm pretty sure I said this right, right at the start of these Exodus updates. I think I did. I unfortunately can't really speculate like I used to back in the day because I am working with the park in the capacity that I am. So the answer I guess is yes, I do know stuff that I'm obviously not allowed to say and I wouldn't want to say, I wouldn't want to spoil the, the, the surprise and the marketing gave and all of that stuff. So yeah, I can't really talk about a theme too much. Um, as and when Fort Park start pushing it and start releasing that information, I'll of course be covering it for you all. But yeah, I've seen so many like predictions as to what the theme is gonna be and I absolutely love reading it all. But at the moment, it's all kept under wraps. So yeah, I find it really hard to talk about and I wish I could like join in with all the speculation. If I was filming these updates like five years ago when I was not affiliated with Fort Park at all and I wasn't working with them, I would be looking for every single Easter egg because there are Easter eggs out there. There are like certain clues here and there. I would honestly be on crackers with it. And I love seeing everyone that is like predicting and trying to spot the Easter eggs and stuff. 
Um, but yeah, when the time is right, the theme will become more apparent. And it's the same with the name, because obviously Project Exodus is just the code name for this roller coaster. When it opens, it's not gonna be called Project Exodus. It will have an actual name. Um, but yeah, at the moment, Fort Park have not released that, but it will all come with time. I feel like I'm really dark at the moment. I do apologize if you can't see me properly. But our next question is from Libster1235, who said, when is Exodus' opening day? Will you be queuing to ride or waiting until after opening day? I'm gonna be honest with you guys here, right? Because obviously, Fort Park are running a whole competition, Club 236, in which every time you scan your annual pass, you get like an entry into this big, big competition and the winners will get access to the very first public train on Project Exodus. Now, a lot of people, when the Club 236 got announced, were like, oh, Jack's just gonna win it. I highly doubt I'll win it, guys. When I come to the park nowadays, I often don't even scan my annual pass because I'm here for work, which is obviously how you enter the competition. If I'm completely honest with you guys, I'm gonna take any opportunity I can to get on Project Exodus as soon as possible, be it for any filming that we do, any photography that we do, um, once a ride is built. I'm basically just gonna try and get on it as soon as possible. Whether if that is before the official opening day, I'm hoping it is. Like, I've literally said Project Exodus 100,000 times on a live stream. I've been here throughout the entire construction process. I've been, I was at the very first planning meeting. I was at the council planning meeting when this, when this thing got approved. I've been there for every single step for Project Exodus and yeah, I'm hoping I can just ride it as soon as possible and I'm so excited for the day when I do ride it and I'll film a video and I'll give my initial re reviews as soon as I get off the ride. I'll probably be in tears, let's be honest guys. It's so crazy that there will be a roller coaster there. Yeah, honestly, uh, like that first ride is going to be emotional because it's been such a long process. We're like two years in since I first started talking about this ride and we've still got longer to go, but yeah, I'm being completely honest with you guys. I'm gonna take any opportunity I can to ride this thing. Right, let's um, switch up location. I'm very aware that I'm super dark here. So apologies if you haven't been able to see me. I'm trying to find the, <laughs> find the light. But yeah, let's head to our next spot. So I've moved down to the other end of the site now, near to my favorite location. I'm unfortunately not up on my favorite little hill because um, it's currently being flattened by a big old machine. But yeah, hopefully you can see me a little bit better over here, although I am very aware that the sun is behind me, so I might still be a little bit silhouetted, but I'm gonna try and um, rapid fire some of these questions because um, I am aware I've been taking quite a while to answer some of them. But our first question comes in from Value Network, who said, do you think the remainder of Old Town, um, the likes of Burger King, the toilets, the shooting gallery, the remains of Slammer and the queue for Black Mirror will get re-themed or reworked to fit with Exodus and a possible new theme or will they be kept the same? Now that's kind of a big question because obviously currently this area is Old Town. However, as for when Project Exodus comes in, a lot of people are wondering if it will have its own land. Now at the moment, Fort Park obviously haven't confirmed anything, but it's very much worth thinking about. If this area does get a brand new theme, will that change any of the surrounding buildings? Now, if you remember my behind the scenes video that I filmed with Russ, obviously he showed me the brand new um, Burger King refurbishment over in Amity. And I said, are there any plans going forwards um, for that other Burger King unit, obviously currently located in Old Town? And he said, at the start of this season, not yet. Um, which makes you think that maybe they've got plans for that unit going into the future and with it being out just outside of the project exodus construction zone and obviously once a ride opens it'll be right outside you know could we be seeing a big refurbishment to better fit in with the theme of this area i don't know and obviously that goes for the all of the buildings that you mentioned and hopefully slammer does go sooner rather than later because unfortunately it hasn't been operating for many years now so i'm with you guys i would like to see it removed um but obviously the park um, haven't done so yet and when they do 
I'll let you guys know and I'll hopefully be able to film it for you guys. Our next question comes from Joe Potkins who said, I would love for the park to make a safe lakeside walk around some of the old Platform 15 route to get views of both Saw and Exodus when it opens. Could be a nice addition to the park. Now, the camera is literally currently sat on a rock that is where Platform 15 used to run. Currently, Platform 15, or the route they used to take for Platform 15 just doesn't exist. There's just massive dirt piles. However, once the ride has been constructed and it's open, I do believe they will have that Platform 15 route open once again. Now, as for if they'll make like a lakeside view year round, I highly doubt it because obviously you have to go through saw the rides ride area to get to that, which is why they have that tunnel there. Um, when Platform 15 was here during Fright Nights. So yeah, I do think it's unlikely. However, once Exodus is here, you will have amazing views of this lake from the queue line and the exit path. In fact, they're putting in like a mini plaza on that exit path so that you can literally look out over the lake. Um, so yeah, I don't think there'll be a year round path around this area as much as I'd love that, but who knows for Fright Nights and other stuff, they will have this space um, to use again. Sorry, my camera ran out of battery over there. So I had to just go and grab a new one. And I found a new location. Again, apologies if I'm a little bit silhouetted. Um, but yeah, our next question comes in from CD Chris 999 said, will there be any plans for new flat rides to go into this same area? Um, and what are the plans for Slammer? Now, currently, the only thing being built in this area is Project Exodus itself. However, technically, there is space for a flat ride to go in uh, maybe a few years down the line and especially if they do remove the likes of Slammer it will open a bit more of a space so yeah unfortunately I can't really answer that question at the current stage there are no plans for a flat ride to go into this area but who knows what might happen um, in the future the mighty imp 08 said just for clarity how much taller is it really versus the big one um, so project exodus is going to be 236 feet tall now the big one obviously up at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, they advertise as 235 feet tall, which would make this ride one foot taller. However, the way in which they measure that um, ride is by sea level. So technically, from the ground to the top of the lift hill, that ride is 213 feet, which still makes it currently the tallest ride in the UK. However, yeah, it's all a bit up in the air because technically if you measured stealth from sea level, I think it's like 400 feet tall. Yeah, it's a little bit confusing how Blackpool have got away with this 235 um, foot level. But yeah, either way, Project Exodus is gonna be taller. So it's gonna be the tallest ride in the UK. Bill C8119 said, if you could make one change to Project Exodus, what would it be? This is a really great question and one that I'm gonna answer very honestly if i was in charge of this project and i had unlimited budget i would make the ride longer because admittedly it is a little bit short i would like to see a few more things happen um, after the splashdown um, towards the end of the ride maybe even some airtime hills but you know it's one of those things there's probably a million reasons why um, that part of the ride didn't happen um, but yeah, if I was in complete control, then I would love to see it a little bit longer. But I don't think it's too short. It is what it is. You know, Stealth's one of my favourite rides in the UK, and that's over in like 12 seconds. So I don't think the shortness of this layout is going to be a major issue. Um, but in a perfect world, I would like to see it a little bit longer. Another question from a true me who said, do you have permission already in place to film the ride construction? And will there be a stage of construction where it's suddenly somehow kept under wraps for theming or something? To be honest... I don't really know, that's a really good question. I plan on filming as much as I possibly can. However, yeah, there might be a stage where I might have to not show certain things in the videos when they might be building certain theming pieces that they don't want to show until maybe the ride opens or closer to the ride's opening. So to be honest, I don't really know. We'll just have to wait and see with time, but I'm gonna film as much as I possibly can for you guys. I'm gonna be here as often as I can and film as much as I can and yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Once a ride is completed, I do want to make a complete like documentary and just put all of the footage that I filmed over the past like few years 
um, of this ride from the planning stages through the construction to once it's actually built i want to put it all together into one really cool video and i also want to do something really cool with the photos that i've been taking um, i've got plans for it i won't say too much now but i'm hopefully going to give you guys a chance to um, kind of look at all of these photos that i've taken over the years and um, kind of have them to keep for yourself but i won't say too much on that now but yeah fingers crossed So I've made my way outside of a site now to better answer the true me's question, which was, can you show us what it actually says on the construction wall a little bit better? Because I did show it quite quickly in the last video. Um, sure thing. As you can see, it now says taking frills to new heights. And then we've got this uh, picture, which uh, is the Fort Park Lake. So that's the kind of view that you're going to get from the top of that lift hill. Um, and yeah, there you go. That is a nice look at the construction wall. And that leads me nicely onto the final question, which is from Dominic Gardner, the legend, who said, are we likely to see the concept on the construction wall change later within the season? My honest answer is I'm not entirely sure, but I think it will be updated at some point over the next year, because obviously over here, all of this um, is the same stuff that we had on there last year. And those are the same graphics kind of advertising the different events that they have here at the park throughout the year. And then um, at the start of this season, we obviously had these bits um, added. However, yeah, I think at some point this construction wall is going to be updated. Don't hold me to that because we might go throughout the entire season and it just remains the same. But who knows? I'd like to see it updated um, with some cool branding and theming. But yeah, they might just be waiting for obviously them to start teasing and announcing the theme and the name a little bit more. So I think it's going to change, but I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, that brings me to the end of this special little construction update for Project Exodus. I hope you've all enjoyed this different little video. I hope you've learned something new and discovered some more information on Project Exodus, the UK's tallest roller coaster, which will be standing right there over the next year. So yeah, I'm gonna leave you all there. Be sure to subscribe for even more construction updates. As I said, the next one that I film should be a really exciting one in which some really exciting stuff starts happening. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. My name's Zach Silkstone. Goodbye.